your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. This is Mitchell Dollar. Oh, how are you, Mr. Mitchell? Fine. Are you available? Oh, completely. The company insures a Mr. Nathan Swing, former resident of Los Angeles. Where is he living now? He isn't. His body was found floating in the Los Angeles Harbor. How did he get there? Somebody shot him first. Check with Sergeant Matthews, Central Division Homicide. He'll give you all the details. I'll get on it right away. I'd like to borrow a few moments from our show to ask you a question. Suppose a little man with three arms and five eyes should skim past your ear in a flying saucer and ask you, what is the biggest business on earth? To be truthful, you would have to tell him that the biggest business in our world employs about 350,000 people, handles 25 billion items every year, transacts $14 billion worth of business in all of its 43,000 branch offices each year, but never clears a profit. Well, maybe such a business sounds out of this world to you, but it actually exists and functions. That big business is the United States Post Office Department, headed by the Postmaster General. Naturally, the work of the post office isn't only the collecting and delivery of mail. Some of the employees of the post office are bookkeepers. Some are engineers. Some plan building layouts and devise gadgets to give you better mail service. Others keep mailbox keys and locks and the five million mailbags in good condition. And here's an interesting sidelight for you. Did you know that mailbags have 13 stripes on them to represent the 13 original states? The post office department has many other types of employees, such as the post office detective force or postal inspectors. Their job is to see that no money is stolen from the mail and to track down racketeers who try to sell worthless merchandise by mail. Then there are the workers in the Postal Savings Department. That's a government-operated savings bank with branches in the various post offices. It comes under the supervision of not only the Postmaster General, but also the Attorney General and the Secretary of the Treasury. All in all, the Post Office Department of our United States government is a mighty busy organization, working on behalf of each and every one of us. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Great Eastern Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Nathan Swing matter. Expense account item one, $198.35. Plane fare and incidentals from Hartford to Los Angeles. Approximately seven hours and 15 minutes after leaving a cold and rainy New York airport, I stepped off the plane into a 75-degree California spring afternoon. I rented a car, drove to my hotel, registered, and called Sergeant Matthews at the city hall. At 2 o'clock, I was sitting in the squad room of Central Division Homicide. Well, there's all we got on swing. We knew him pretty well. Been picked up four or five times in minor charges. One conviction, bookmaking, June of 48. Mm-hmm. Shot once in the chest, once in the right shoulder. You got any leads? Well, nothing definite. Ever heard of Jimmy Durando? Yeah, a big operator out here, isn't he? About the biggest. A stoolie claims a couple of Durando's boys made contact with Swing. Of course, we can't prove it. And as far as we know, Durando hasn't ever had too much to do with Swing. Swing used to book his bets, but they're never very friendly. Swing's small time, not the type that would particularly appeal to Durando. Then why have him killed? I don't know. But something's happened that involves Durando. It happened right after this killing. Daniel Fletcher, special investigator on a vice crusade, has been after Durando for a long time. And Durando is due to appear before the committee tomorrow. You seen the morning paper? Fletcher calls off Durando investigation. Huh. In his statement to the press, Fletcher said he felt there just wasn't enough evidence to warrant investigation. Well, what did he call the investigation for in the first place? Yeah. I know Fletcher pretty well. He'd never have gotten a subpoena for Durando unless he figured he had enough to convict him. Now he calls it off. The morning after, a small-time hood named Swing is pulled out of the bay. Well, there may not be any connection. It may not. So far, that's all I've got. And I have to solve a killing. Fletcher is, uh, 
An honest man? I've always thought so. Done a fine job so far. Well, I got a job, too. Going to see Fletcher? I thought I might. Any objections? Not to seeing Fletcher. But if you decide to pay Jimmy Durando a visit, tell me about it first, huh? That harbor at San Pedro is awful cold in the morning. The sergeant gave me the address where I could find Daniel Fletcher. I walked over to the Equitable Building on Spring Street. Fletcher's secretary informed me her boss wasn't coming into the office that day. So I checked back with the sergeant, and he gave me Fletcher's home address. I drove out to Beverly Hills and turned north off Sunset on a beautiful winding street fronted on both sides by big, expensive homes. The Fletcher house was the last one on the block, a white colonial set back a few hundred feet from the street. Yes? Is Mr. Fletcher in? Who may I say is calling, sir? Uh, Johnny Dollar. Tell him it's Who about... Is it, William? Uh, Mr. Dollar, sir. Yes? What can I do for you? Well, I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Fletcher. I'm from the Great Eastern Life Insurance Company. I'm not insured with your company. Yes, I know. Well, what do you want? I'd rather talk to you alone. Well, that's all, William. Yes, sir. Couldn't we take this business up at my office, Mr. Dollar? I went to your office. It's about a killing, Mr. Fletcher. Killing? A murder. A man named Swing. Nathan Swing. Well, what's this got to do with me? I don't know. Come in. Now, what about this Nathan Swing? Well, I thought maybe you could tell me. What would I know about him? Well, you know who he is. I'm in the habit of reading the morning papers. But I'm not in the habit of discussing matters like this in my home. I think we'll let the matter drop until tomorrow. You can call my office for an appointment. Okay. I'll see what Jimmy Durando has to say about it. Now, wait just a minute. What do you think you're doing? What's all this about? Well, I just said I was going to talk to Durando. If that makes you sore, I apologize. What's Durando got to do with this killing? I didn't say he had anything to do now, with it. Now, listen, Dollar. I'm an old hand at beating around the bush. Yeah, obviously. I mean dealing with people who beat around the bush. I don't like it. That makes us even. And I don't like guys who try to throw their weight around. Well, we agree on a lot of things. What's the matter with you? Don't you like your job? Oh, it's a living. Well, I suggest if you want to keep it. You'd better start doing things a little differently. I suggest you tell that to the people who pay me. I had that in mind. Well, suit yourself. I have to solve a killing. And until my company says lay off, I'm going right ahead. I told you, Donna, I don't like people pushing their way into my home. Who pushed? You know, I think Sergeant Matthews had a pretty good hunch. Matthews? What's he got to do with it? Give him a call. He'll tell you all about it. Donna, I'm going to give you a warning. Well, make it quick. I want to get out in the fresh air. Dad? Mary, what are you doing out of bed? I thought maybe... Sweetheart, get back up in bed. William, you shouldn't have come down, my dear. Who are you talking to? Is it about Jimmy? It's nothing important now. Uh, come on, honey. Uh, William! I feel so terrible. Now, dear, it's all right. Yes, it's Fletcher. Uh, take Miss Fletcher back up to her room. I don't yes. want to sleep anymore. I keep dreaming. Dad, please. Come on now, dear. It's going to be all right. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, Hello, Miss. <laughs> I think you'd better leave now, Mr. Dollar. I drove back to my hotel and put in a call to Sergeant Matthews. I told him about my interview with Fletcher and asked where I could find Jimmy Durando. He advised against it, but suggested the safest way to see Durando would be at night in Durando's restaurant. He gave me the address and promised to have a couple of his boys in the place just in case. I spent the rest of the day relaxing in my room and around 8 went down to the dining room and had dinner. At 9.15, I walked into Durando's expensive restaurant. There was an empty stool at the bar. Yes, sir? Where can I find Jimmy Durando? I don't know if he's in yet. Take my word for it, he's in. Up to his neck. I'm just a bartender, mister. If you want Mr. Durando, you better handle it yourself. Now, do you want a drink? Scotch and water. Yes, sir. The bartender brought me my drink, and in about two minutes, just as I expected, a well-muscled gentleman walked up behind me and breathed down my collar. Good evening. Yeah, it is. I understand you're looking for Mr. Durando. Well, you've understood just right. What do you want to see him about? Nathan Swing. 
Okay. Let's go. What's your name? Johnny Dollar. You a cop, Mr. Dollar? Insurance investigator. Waiter. He says you're an uh, insurance investigator. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, just what are you uh, investigating? A murder. Nathan Swing's murder. Why come to me? You don't know anything about it? Well, I heard somebody killed him, but I couldn't care less. You uh, knew him? Mm, slightly. I never shook hands with him. I'm surprised your company would insure a crumb like that. Who are you insured with, Mr. Durando? carry my own insurance. You must pay pretty high rates. What do you mean? Well, one day it looks like you're going to be locked up for keeps. The next day, the whole thing's called off. you got a pretty good policy. I thought you came here to talk about uh, Nathan Swing. I thought I was. I don't know what all this is about, Dollar, but I... I don't like you. You want some advice? Oh, by all means. Don't bother me anymore. Sounds a little bit like a threat, Mr. Durando. I'm glad you noticed. So am I. Well, see you around. Oh, now, Tony, you're not being very nice. How am I going to open the door with your big stomach in the way? You want him to open the door, Mr. Durando? You can open it for him. Thanks, Tony. My pleasure. I walked back to the dining area and started for the front door. Then I saw her, crossing the room in my direction. The same girl I'd seen that afternoon standing on a staircase and looking very sick. Mary Fletcher, Daniel Fletcher's daughter. I watched her walk back to the hallway that led to Durando's office. I waited in front of the cafe for 20 minutes. And finally, she came out. She looked sicker than she had that afternoon. She climbed into her car and drove west. I followed. She drove to the beach and parked at the end of a deserted fishing pier. I got out of my car and walked through the darkness to the end of the pier. She was standing near the rail, looking down at the water. No! No! No, let me go! Come on, come on, stop let it! Let me go! Go away! Take it easy. I'm sorry I had to hit you, but a high dive never solves anything. Come on. Let's go sit in your car. Come on. Go on, move over. Why did you stop me? Why did you let me jump? Now, just try and relax. Here. Have a cigarette. Oh. Who are you? You saw me this afternoon at your father's. My name is Dollar. You should have let me jump. I couldn't have done anything then. Who couldn't have done anything? Oh, please, I don't know what I'm saying. Please take me back home and just leave me alone. It might help you to talk about it. I don't want to talk about anything. I just wish I were dead. I wouldn't have to talk about anything or think about anything. Come on, come on now. Get hold of yourself. Who are you? What do you want? What are you doing here? I'm an insurance investigator. Insurance? I followed you from Durando's. I'm investigating the death of Nathan Swing. Did you know Nathan Swing? I only saw him once. When was that? The night I killed him. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? On August 2nd, 1923, 
His oath of office was administered by his father, a justice of the peace. Within three years after he became president, the national debt was reduced by $2 billion. His presidency was marked by continued national prosperity. The country's income increased and the people's wages were high. He improved relations between the United States and Mexico with the help of his goodwill ambassador, Dwight Morrow. He was known for his dry humor, common sense, and the faculty for measuring his words before he spoke. If you don't have his name by now, here's one more clue. During his administration, the soldier's bonus bill was passed. Who was he? Calvin Coolidge, 30th President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Fletcher sat in the darkness facing me. She wasn't crying anymore. If she were telling the truth, I'd found the murderer of Nathan Swing. That's right. I killed him. I don't know why I'm telling you this will ruin my father. I just have to get it out in the open. I can't keep it locked up anymore. Well, why don't you tell me the whole thing? All right. I'll have that cigarette now. Yeah, sure. Thanks. You found out sooner or later you saw me at Jimmy's. Durandos? Yes. I've been seeing Jimmy for quite a while. I know it's pretty terrible. I guess I knew how wrong it was when I was seeing him. Your father didn't know about it. No. He didn't find out about it until Jimmy told him. Puts Durando in a pretty nice spot. Going around with the daughter of the man who's trying to send him to prison. I'm not going to try to justify it. I was in love with him. And he told your father? He told him I'd killed Nathan Swain. So your father called off the investigation. Protect me. I would have come right out and admitted everything, but I knew what the publicity would do to my father's career. Durando's blackmailing your father? He has the gun I used. How did it happen? Well, I'd never seen this Nathan Swing before. I was with Jimmy one night, and Swing came in and said something about a bet. Something about some money that he had coming. It was an argument, and this man, Swing, pulled out a gun. Jimmy grabbed him, and they began fighting. Jimmy knocked the gun out of his hand, and when Swing hit him and grabbed one of those pokers from the fireplace, I got the gun and shot him. He just kind of stood there for a second, and... What did Durando do? I don't remember too much about it. I got hysterical, and Jimmy put me in my car and told me to go home. Not to say anything, if he'd take care of it. I wanted to go to the police right then, but Jimmy said it would ruin Dad. I don't know what'll happen now. I've told you, and it'll ruin Dad anyway, but... I just can't keep something like this quiet. Only trouble, if you make a confession to the authorities now, Durando's in a better position to beat the rap. Your father still won't prosecute for fear of what Durando might bring out at the trial. What can I do? Just keep quiet for a little longer. How will that help Durando hasn't got a thing if he hasn't got the gun you used. Nobody's ever going to get that gun away from Jimmy. Well, it's worth a try anyway. You mean you're going to... Why should you try to get the gun? What difference does it make to you? Guys like Durando make a lot of difference to me. But he'll still swear that I killed Swing. Without the evidence, it'll be your word against his. You can lie for a little while. You can lie long enough for your father to prosecute Durando. After that, you can go to the police and tell him the truth. I don't think my father would do it under those circumstances. I think he would. I'll have a talk with him. I think he'll go after Durando just like he's always wanted to. The only thing that's stopping him now is that gun. What are you going to do? See Mr. Durando again. Be careful. I always try. I watched her turn out on the Malibu Highway and head back for town. Then I drove my rented convertible back to Durando's Cafe. It 
It was close to one in the morning when I pulled up across the street and sat for a while trying to figure out what to do. An alley ran between the cafe and another building. I remembered Durando's office. He'd been sitting with his back to a window. A window that faced an alley. That thing's ready to crack up. Yes, you will. How can you be sure? You saw her tonight. You really think she can hold out long? Look, it's my neck. I got to do the work. I got a stake in this, too, remember? Wait a minute. What's the matter? I'm going to shut the window. Look, as long as you're worried, why don't you just... I couldn't hear them anymore, so I stayed close to the building and looked in. Durando had crossed to a wall safe and was taking something out. It was a snub-nosed 38. He crossed back to his desk, put the gun in a box, and handed it to Tony. Tony nodded and left the office. Tony wasn't hard to stay with. I picked him up in front of the cafe and tailed him east across town to the Union Station. He headed for a row of public lockers and stopped at one. What you got in the box, Tony? Huh? Let's have it. Running down the ramp to the passenger tunnel. At the end of the ramp, he stopped and drew his gun. After the shot, he turned into one of the tunnels and ran up to the loading platform. would be full of cops in a few minutes. I didn't want to hang around to make explanations. I took the box with a gun in it and cut across the yard. Sergeant Matthews. This is Dollar. Oh, I was just on my way out. I've been trying to get you. I'm calling from a gas station phone booth. I want Durando's home address. I don't think I should give it to you. Look, I'm onto something. I know. I had two men staked out in Durando's tonight. I saw the Fletcher girl come in and reported you followed her. She's home by now. I'll tell you all about it after I see Durando. Okay. I have to check on a shooting at the Union Station. I'll uh, meet you in my office in an hour. No, meet me at Durando's in an hour. All right. He lives in Beverly Hills, 1818 North Foothill. Thanks. I couldn't tell Matthews about the shooting until I'd seen Durando alone. And when he found Tony in the train yard, he'd be over to Durando's soon enough anyway. I drove out Wilshire and turned north when I reached Beverly Hills. I found Durando's house and parked on a side street. The house was dark. Durando was obviously either in bed or still at the club. I climbed the high fence and dropped down into the garden, cut across the flower beds to the rear of the house and located the big French doors that led to the study. I tried them, but they were locked. I was just turning away when... Pretty clumsy, darling. Yeah. But you're not, Durando. Who hit you? You kidding? No, not a bit. One of my guards found you lying on the terrace and brought you in here. You're lucky you were unconscious or he would have shot you. Well, it looks like you're going to take care of that anyway. You're trespassing. It'll be very legal. Oh, that's a new wrinkle for you. Who hit you? Well, if you don't know, I certainly don't. Where's Tony? How do I know? I found the box lying next to you. Where's the gun? Well, if it's not in the box, I couldn't tell you. You killed Tony? Unless he's got nine lives. How'd you find out about the gun? You got an alley in back of your cafe... Ah, you couldn't have heard much. You must have talked to Mary. Suit yourself. Okay, get up. Now tell me all about it or I'll blow you apart right here. Maybe I'm lying. 
Maybe I do know where that gun is. I doubt it. I don't think you'll take a chance. I've been taking chances all my life, Dollar. And you know, I'd like to kill you. The police will be here any minute. Yeah, sure. I called Sergeant Matthews right after Tony died at the station. How do you think I got your address? I want to know where that gun is. And you better ask the guy who hit me over the head. All right. You're going to get it right in the face. No, he isn't. She'd been standing back in the shadows near the door that led to the hallway. When she stepped out, she was pointing the snub nose 38 right at Durando's middle. He turned and they both fired together. <laughs> Where did he hit you, Mary? He... He, he deserved it, didn't he? Where did he hit you? The... Side. Is... Jimmy. Yeah, I think so. He did deserve it to me. Yeah, he sure did. I'm sorry I hit you in the dark. I didn't know. It's all right. I was home. Started worrying about you. I went back to the cafe. And he wasn't there. So I came here. Saw you. Eating through the garden. I'll just take it easy. I found the gun in the box. Tell Dad I'm sorry about it. Mary. Fletcher wouldn't have to prosecute. After he buried his daughter, Fletcher closed his office and took a long vacation. Maybe it helped some, but I doubt it. Expense account item two, $45.75, hotel bill and incidentals. Item three, $35, car rental. Item four, $156.85, plane fare and incidentals, back to Hartford. Expense account total, $435.05. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Clayton Post, Tim Graham, Dick Ryan, William Johnstone, Virginia Gregg, David Young, and Jay Novello. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Charles Lyon, inviting you to join us again next week at this time when, from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar.